Hi, thank you for joining me. I want to demonstrate making a birdhouse using pastel. So what you will need is a um, paper towel or tissue paper, baby wipes, any kind of baby wipes, and that's for cleaning your fingers off through the process, that and the tissue paper, and pastels. We're going to use the pastels. So of course paper we'll stick with our rule of three colors uh, the tones light medium and a dark and you can pick whichever three tones you want and the three tones I'm picking are a blue a green and a brown the brown is going to kind of blend with my um, what do you call this? My pastel or my charcoal. You can use charcoal to draw it out or you can use a pencil. I'm going to use a charcoal because the charcoal will actually blend in with the paint colors. So what you're going to need, and I'm trying to work this camera at a new angle. You're going to need squares and you'll need a cylinder, which is just circular. And lines. Don't spend a lot of time on getting everything correct. You just want to get it in there, which will come somewhere here and then just off set. You're going to do another one of those and you're going to offset it slightly. They need to be the, about, about the same size. See, I'm not worried about that. You can always touch that up later. And now I'm going to join these two corners together. These two corners together. That wasn't just perfect, but it'll work. These two corners and then these two corners. Joining them that way makes a cube. Once the cube is done, now I'm going to place a, it's a circle, but not a true circle because it's slightly at an angle. And then here is where I would put the cylinder for the bird to stand as he's going in and out of the house. This circle can be lower if you want or it can be right there in the middle. Here, I'll come up a little higher. And again, I'm going to use Still using that square and then imaginary on the other side it's going to go across there and then I'll draw an offline here for it to be under somewhere under here is going to be a pole And I can 3D it by making this front piece wider than this side piece. And as you see, my lines are not super straight. They don't need to be super straight. Don't worry about them being super straight. So I'm going to try and adjust this up slightly so you can see the whole thing. And hopefully you can see that really well. So, decide which direction your light is coming from. And I'm going to say that my light is coming from, I'll, I'll let the light come from this direction. So light coming from that direction. My lightest, brightest color is going to go down first here. not going to hit right up under here but it'll hit somewhere in here and don't forget this side of the pole but not directly under there because the shadow from the house will fall onto the pole and our color harmony says that and let's put a little light here because that's protruding out and our color harmony says we're going to need some of this color in other places so I'll just put a little color there here and there The dark part is going to be under this E, 
Remember, I put some green there. We don't cover up. We add two. And this is going to be darker under here because of the shadow from the birdhouse itself. I'm making that more or less a straight line and a slanted line. I'm making that line straight because the shadow, this house will cast a straight line shadow. And for color harmony's sake, I'm going to add some of this blue here, there. Definitely need to put some under here because the shadow of the roof will overhang here. And light is coming from here, so the darkest part is from that direction. And so I'm going to make sure I put some of this blue in here. harmony and then this is I don't know what tone of blue this is but this is my mid-tone blue and so I'm going to see it more so than any other color I need to see bits and pieces in here This is the inside where the inside where the bird goes in and out of. Uh, I'm going to put a little of this to show the width of the wood in there, but the rest is going to be dark. I could even come back with some black from that. Not a whole lot, just enough. As you can tell, you can still see those lines through there, but that's okay because I'm really just laying down. And I want to put some of this color throughout even where the lights are in there and I can't see this dark blue in here much so I'm going to put some in here too a little of the green in here just for color harmony's sake all three of your colors need to be everywhere, just in varying amounts. This light green, lime green, whatever it is, is my lightest light. This tone, so where the light hits it, you can see most of that light, light green. That's my lightest light there. But the darkest dark is this dark blue and it's over on the opposite side of the lightest light. And then the mid-tone will cover everything else. And once I cover everything else with the mid-tone, then I can go back in with my hand, the lightest light. I don't want to mix the colors up. I want to keep where my lightest lights are. And then I wipe my finger off. And then I go to the mid-tones. I'm making sure not to cross this line. That blue is solid, solid. So I know I'm going to have to go back and mix some of this other color in there. But I don't want that dark blue in my mid-tone yet. I don't want it to dominate it. It's in there. I just don't want it to dominate the mid-tone. This is my mid-tone area here. I'm 
I'm writing a finger off and now for my shadow area. And now that's the first layer. Generally we put like three layers of paint on something. And the same goes for this because that black is so dominant there I can come back in and add some more, but I will need to blend it a little better. So when I do that, I'm going to just add more of this blue because I need this darker. And in doing so, I cover the black line that's there. Same thing on this side. I'm covering the line. And what I'm going to do I just want the blue to show through here and there. Covering the black line for all of those because I don't want that. I would prefer to see the blue line uh, more so than the black line. In these, I can come in here and on this edge though, not the whole line, just part of it there, part of it there, just to accent that line. Here, I'm going to do the same in there. I'm going to lay this pastel flat and add a little bit more black in there to make that blue a little darker. I want it a little darker, but shading it down. I don't want to lose this line there. I want to keep that there. For this, I'm going to add just a little of that green in there, and a little of that blue in there, so it doesn't look so flat, because right now, this looks really flat to me, so I'm going to add a little of this mid-tone in there. And back over this, the mid-tone area. I don't want to lose these greens and these dark blues in here, but what I'm doing is I'm covering up the black line, not in this corner, because those are defining those corners. I want to keep it that way. But I have where I did the birdhouse, when I first made the cube, I have those black lines in there, and I want to kind of get rid of those. And to do that, I'll need to come in with extra pastels in those areas. So that's all I'm doing. I'm focusing on those dark, dark lines that are underneath. And I'm pressing pretty hard now. I'm looking at this and I want some of that covered up too. This still is too blue that dark blue, so. I may even add a little bit more blue. My mid-tone blues in there. A few more here for color harmony's sake. And now the lighter green, which is my lightest light. Covering that line. It's not gonna take that line out completely but it's going to dull it down some. As you can see, it's dulling that line down some there. I don't want to lose the line. I just don't want the line to be that solid black. And I'm, I hope you can hear this. I'm kind of pressing down really hard.
and that is much better than what it was before. Now, I don't want to blend all of these together. I want to kind of make the viewer blend those together with their eye, but I like this kind of blending uh, mixture better than I like this mixture. It's almost a solid line kind of mixture, so I'm going to come in and break that up. As you can see, it broke that up a whole lot. This edge needs to break up some too. It's the solid edge between the darker blues, the two blues rather. So I'm going to come in with the, this is my mid-tone blue and lend some to the dark blue. And that's much better. I can still see these lines in here. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit and give it some of the lighter color. Create that color harmony, and I'll give it a few of the dark blues in there, creating a variation in the color. And just lightly blending it. Lightly blending it, lightly blending it. Clean these lines up. I'm kind of pleased with that. Much better than the other. Now, once you do that, you can address. You get this where you want it. I can go back and add more layers because I can see those lines, the structure lines underneath. So I can come back and add another layer. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is using the same three colors, Come down here and address this edge in short strokes, upward, back and forth and upward, some longer than others. You can also lay this flat. But use all three colors that you use in here. Make some longer than others. And if you notice, I'm going from the bottom up. I'm using the corner and I'm using the flat surface of it. The one thing that is not present here, that's present in here, is that black. And so I'm going to have to put some in here, even though I didn't want to, for the sake of color harmony. So I'm putting it at the base. Yeah, add a few in here. And that's how you create your color harmony. Whatever you use on one, you have to use on the other. Now I can go back and add more color in here and use a kneaded eraser on pastel to get a, that to come off. Grassy area. Covering up the base. The pole. Notice the color harmony. Every area of the paper is not covered. I did leave some white in there. And if you like, you can go back and add some white for highlights. And I will add some white highlights on this and show you. Okay, I'm going to see if I can do this with holding the camera.
not trying to cover up what's there all right as you can see i did add some white highlights here and i tried to add a few in here it is really difficult to get that white to show up and what the white did here was just lighten it see the darker um more brilliant color here than here so it's much easier to leave little pockets of white not cover up the entire surface of the paper that is the surface of the paper coming through so if you do that similar to watercolor by leaving some white space and not cover up all of your white spaces then it will show through really lovely thank you for joining me enjoy the birdhouse project